So Paul and I are going to tag team this a little bit. I'm going to talk about uh, how we do things. Paul's going to come up and do a demo and show you what we do. But I think how we do it is, is really what differentiates us in the uh, enterprise software market. And uh, you know, specifically, we're a leader in application performance management uh, for modern applications and production. A couple things are important. We were founded in 2008. So we're a uh, you know, startup with uh, modern technology and, and modern uh, techniques. We've got over 500 customers uh, in our third year of selling now. And, and the biggest thing is the, the customer satisfaction we'll talk about here in a second. Gartner in the first year uh, put us in the leadership uh, part of the Magic Quadrant, which is, uh, is pretty unusual. And so it, it, it kind of begs the question why. You know, I, uh, I recently was uh, head of global sales for McAfee. Uh, security company uh, you've probably heard of and, uh, and left in December to come over and, uh, and join AppDynamics. And the thing that really attracted me is I think that there is a major disruption uh, going on in enterprise software. I think that, you know, fortunately for customers, the, the old way, you know, things that have been done is, is getting ready to change pretty dramatically. And there's a thing called a net promoter score. And basically it's a real simple uh, equation. It's, you know, would you recommend a solution to your friend or colleague? In enterprise software, um, I started out years ago with a company called Computer Associates right on Long Island, and you know, you've got companies like BMC and so on, and HP. You know, the, the net promoter score is 19 out of 100. Uh, when you add consumer to that, McAfee and Symantec and Adobe and Microsoft, it jumps up to a 41 or 42. Apple, you know, one of the most uh, widely respected companies on the planet, is a 72. Well, at AppDynamics, uh, the last quarter was 81. And the reason for it is, is because of this disruption. Um, it's no longer necessary to take six months, a bunch of consultants, and you know, maybe you can take something from a demo to POC to staging to you know, something that has some value. Um, we have a lot of focus on what's called consumerization of enterprise software. And it's the ability out of the box to get an experience in about 30 minutes. And what's really interesting about it is that, you know, Paul will show you, it looks kind of too good to be true. But we've kind of flipped the model on its head. So there's two things enterprise software companies don't want you to know. One's the price, and we publish ours on our website. Number two, they don't want you to see the product in production. You can download a free version uh, into production right from our website. Now, it's about 25% of the capabilities. It's free. It's free forever. Uh, come May 10th, we're going to download the full product, uh, and that'll be available for a 15-day trial. But again, because the software works out of the box and it provides tremendous quick time to value, you know, we want to promote uh, customers' prospects actually download that. We've got uh, a lot of focus on customer satisfaction. We don't believe in consulting. Uh, the most consulting we offer is three days uh, because, you know, the software works out of the box. Uh, 15 minutes to 30 minutes is usually the uh, time to value. Uh, it does auto discovery. So out of the box, it'll discover your application and all the links, and then we'll show you based on baselines, what level of code or what line of code is actually causing a problem in a slowdown or actually a downtime. So that uh, in the meantime to repair is, is amazing. 200 servers in six hours at exact target, 2,700 servers in 15 days at orbits. And, uh, and again, it really focuses on taking production applications all the way back into development. So if there's a problem in production, developers can use the same tool, look at the line of code that's causing that problem and, uh, and get it fixed. We scale. Uh, Netflix, which is you know one of the most progressive companies in terms of uh, web services, has 10,000 uh, servers on one application. You know, to put that in perspective, they run in the uh, Amazon cloud, and they'll, they'll refresh those 10,000 servers totally in a month. So the configuration will totally change, and we follow those business transactions from the user all the way through the database and back, and uh, we dynamically do that uh, with, with companies like Netflix. We offer either SaaS, uh, on-premise, or both. So we offer choice, and again, from a cost of ownership, it's, uh, it's very, very attractive. You know, to date myself, I started out in the mainframe, and uh, just like mainframe tools wouldn't work in client servers, so things like Unicenter and Tivoli, Patrol, um, you know, OpenView came along. The same thing is, is going on today. You've got uh, companies like Wiley, which is now owned by CA. Uh, you've got, uh, uh, I was at uh, Mercury in a prior life, and uh, HP has the Topaz that we, uh, we had there for the FAT client, the J2EE, uh, that was kind of popular in the early 2000s. And that's what it looked like. You know, the user would log on, uh, perform a business process, go through a WebLogic server all the way to an Oracle uh, back end. And it was, it was, you know, good technology. It really would, would follow that transaction and point out where the slowdown was. 
but this is what today looks like. So if you're building applications in Java, .NET, PHP, uh, you've got this perfect storm. You know, people are wanting to take advantage of Web 2.0. They want to agile development, so not just one release a year, but several. Uh, so, of course, uh, take advantage of cloud, big data. There's a convergence of all these technologies coming together. And in AppDynamics, what we do is we support that. Uh, we leverage those technologies so our customers can, uh, can follow transactions from the user through the database and back. And come May 10th, we're actually going to introduce the ability to uh, auto-remediate a problem. So not only allow you to fix it, down, to find it to the down uh, the line of code, but also take uh, automated uh, response and, uh, and fix it uh, on the fly. So, without further ado, let me bring Paul up. He'll actually show you the technology and, uh, and what it does. Paul Jassic runs uh, the East Coast uh, Technical Services for us out of New York. Thank you, Joe. All right. All right, so why don't we imagine for a minute that you have a e-commerce online application that is the business for your company. Uh, mission critical revenue generating as a such as a bookstore so our demo platform here is a bookstore and you wanted to gain visibility into why your application was having performance issues why your customers maybe were calling your help center complaining about not being able to check out complete that revenue generating transaction so our solution app dynamics has uh, has agents that install into your applications okay and what they do is they have an extraordinary amount of intelligence built in to automatically discover your application. Not only the transactions that users are invoking against it, but as well as the interactions between the different components that make up your application. And this is an application flow map that is automatically generated. Okay. Key point here is you did not have to tell our agents what to look for. If you have to do that to your APM solution, that's a non-starter to begin with. Okay, so <coughs> this was generated automatically by our agents in the transactions that were being invoked, as well as the interactions between the different components and service layers, as well as the databases on the back end, messaging uh, infrastructure, etc. So this is done automatically for you. Secondly, if your development teams are building and releasing your applications in an agile methodology, again, having a wealth of intelligence built in is not going to induce any friction into that process. So you would not want to have to tell your APM solution what to look for if you're an agile development type of operation. Then finally, as Joe just mentioned, today's apps are <coughs> extremely complicated. They are comprised of multiple layers, service layer architectures, components that are talking to each other, sometimes expecting immediate replies, sometimes expecting replies in the future. You might be deployed in a cloud. You might be relying on third party services, right? So this notion of being able to give you visibility into the application, even though it is distributed in nature, that a transaction operates across X number of tiers, is, is absolutely critical in today's APM solutions. So we have that capability to give you the visibility into distributed transactions as they execute in your application architecture. So it's not just about the automatic discovery though, right? But what are we, what are we actually interested in looking at, right? So a lot of APM solutions today will give you literally thousands of metrics on all the underlying components that make up your application, leaving you, who might not necessarily know the innards of the application, to figure out what's important to monitor, what's important to look at. We do away with that. We focus on transactions. We feel <coughs> transactions should be the fundamental unit of monitoring and management. Uh, why do we say that? Well, when's the last time a customer called a help center complaining about your spring beans running too slow, or your JVM's heap taking too much time in garbage collection, right? Life would be easy if that were the case, but it's not. Customers call in and they speak in what? Transaction ease, right? Hey, why can't I check out, right? Why is my log on clocking out after 60 seconds? So why shouldn't your APM solution view the world in that fashion as well? So we discover the transactions automatically that are being invoked um, by the users in the application and start collecting key performance indicators on those transactions, right? How fast, how many, how often, and 
we begin to characterize the performance of those transactions. Our agents will be able to sense, based on intelligence built in for calculating thresholds and baselines, when transactions are running slowly. Because the individuals tasked with monitoring the apps in production, again, are not experts of the app. They didn't develop it. They didn't architect it, right? So they need a solution to be able to figure out very quickly what underlying component is responsible for making that transaction run slowly, okay? So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at the checkout transaction because it's having a bad day here. We're going to take a look at what we call snapshots. So the agents, when transactions are running slowly, will automatically, automatically collect snapshots of slow transactions. So here we see one checkout transaction that was very slow. And even if you don't know how this app was built, you can look at the time spent in all the various components and begin to understand that, yeah, this guy was slow because it made an excruciatingly long database call from the inventory tier. Okay, so we kind of have an idea, something to do with database interaction. Furthermore, wherever there is a drill down icon, we will show you down to a class method level, a sequence of execution, and again, a production operations person won't care between a spring bean and an enterprise java bean. They will focus on the right hand column where they see external calls being made to other services, and they can actually follow the transaction um, from one layer of the app to another. So we can actually drill down into the offending tier where that long database call was being made, all the way down to SQL state. Again, without knowing anything about the application. So finally, once we've identified and isolated, right, let's do something about it. So Joe mentioned before that we have the, we'll have the capability to remediate the issues that arise in the application through what we call a workflow engine, right? To be able to execute runbooks in the application um, to reduce the business impact of those performance things. So for example, let's say we have uh, runbooks that will automatically, if there is a slow server uh, comprised of a couple different steps, so you can have something execute to have an operator go through several manual steps, right? Review the dashboards, the events, the violations, the snapshots. And then after they check off on the fourth manual step, the workflow will kick in to automatically restart that application server. So being able to remediate, right, the business impact of performance issues that are uncovered automatically, as opposed to what really happens today all the time, manually, right? Somebody is tasked with doing this, right? So, at the end of the day, it's all about reducing the amount of time it takes for your teams to figure out the underlying component or interaction of an app within your app that's making it run slowly. Because if it's a mission critical <coughs> revenue generating application, right, time literally is money. So the quicker you can get resolution and back online, eradicate that performance issue, the happier your boss is going to be. Right? Any questions? Yes, sir. Have you ever heard of the term, the term silk hat on a pig? So if somebody was running this awesome software on Amazon and Amazon's just slow, how do you avoid getting blamed? Because your product's awesome. But I think you run, I mean, how do you stop Orbitz from running this on Amazon during a holiday crunch season? Yeah, so, so what we do is we will actually <coughs> differentiate between application uh, induced performance anomalies versus the underlying infrastructure, right? So if the servers are running too hot or if the network is too slow, et cetera. Can you, do you have something you can show us about that? Uh, so we have, a, we have a machine agent that collects those types of machine level metrics mm -hmm. and they are correlated in the snapshot that I was showing you. So I could have stepped into analyze node problems and showed you, yes, at this particular slow transaction, okay, your CPU was running too hot. Whereas the baseline normally is 20, today you were running at 95. So we will give you the correlation of the underlying infrastructure metrics. Called mean time to innocence. Sorry, mean time to repair. You know, the, the, the shift that's going on is from infrastructure to applications. And, you know, we're moving away from the world of, you know, bottoms up to uh, top down. And applications are, you know, they're the business now. Other questions? Any questions? What's the size of your client base, small to big, revenue-wise? Like how, how, like how big of an enterprise is? Our, our typical market is a billion dollars and up in revenue, or a hundred million to a billion if they uh, have the ability for a hundred uh, Java virtual machines. 
So there's some uh, financial services, insurance, healthcare, and so on that would fit that. But, uh, it's about 15,000 addressable uh, customers. How long does it take to integrate into the existing infrastructure for, let's say, a hundred fifty million dollar revenue business? It's uh, the 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 integration, the installation configuration, literally can be measured in in a couple hours. We routinely have you know a morning session and have visibility into an application like this by lunchtime. Okay, I mean, again, that's a whole idea, right? Awesome. Early APM 1.0 was typical enterprise software. It would take weeks to get in there. Uh, we, we need to move away from that. That's the reason why the free version is so important. I mean, it sounds too good to be true, and so go download it and try it. Yes, sir. Do you support other things like Ruby, Python, KDB, K KX? So today it's Java, .NET, and PHP. Those are the three. Plans to expand? Well, we're just, just releasing <coughs> PHP, so yes. Yeah. And from there, what's the roadmap? <coughs> so uh, uh, it might be uh, Python after that, right? I mean, with the three that we currently have right now, I think we probably cover 95% of mission critical apps out there. So it's going to be market driven, obviously. How do you yes? push out the agents? I'm sorry? How do you push out the agents? So, um, so typically, uh, uh, Customers will deploy the agents and have them configured as part of their continuous build process, right? So when they're building their Java or .NET applications, et cetera, they will have the inclusion of the agents built into that. So when they rev an image or an uh, AMI automatically, it'll, it'll be present there. That's typically what happens. Any more? Thanks, Thanks very much. Thank you very much. Thanks.